Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Skyrim Plus. Today we're featuring Dragon Tree Temple. Let's check out the map. Here we are at Dragon Tree Temple. We're near Redwater Den, Rift Watchtower, Trevor's Watch, and here we are again at Dragon Tree Temple. For our world space view, to the left is Trevor's Watch, to the middle of the screen is the Rift Watchtower. As we move further right, there's Dragon Tree Temple, our featured home of the day. And you can see to the right in the background is Riften. And now we're moving back to our featured home, Dragon Tree Temple. As we approach the home, the first features I notice are the circular doorway and the arch, which has really impressive woodwork. And as we look to the right, we notice the home comes with a pretty large stable for your horses. And now we're ready to head inside of our new home. As we enter, we find ourselves inside of an epically large tree. There are trees, flowers, a stream of water, a wooden walkway, and decking. And as we turn to the right, we see a statue of a snow elf. That seems very temple-like. And as we continue walking the path, we can see some beautiful flowers like snowberries and nightshade that we can harvest later. And as we turn the corner, you can see the portal that will take us to the next area. And there's a table and some chairs to sit and enjoy the view of the ground floor. No pun intended. Now that we've seen all that this floor has to offer, let's see what's next. The next floor starts with a cooking pot to the left, a dining table for four straight ahead, and we have a pantry to our right, which includes some harvestable ingredients. And as we enter the next part of this space, we have a bedroom. Starting to the left, you have a wardrobe, there's a double bed, there's a chest of drawers with some forsworn armor and a jewelry box with jewelry included and a bookshelf with some loose books, a petty soul gem, and three daggers with different effects. I'll let you research those on your own time. And on this side of the room, you have a pool and a natural shower. Look at the ivy gently rustling and the water flowing. It's a very calming space. There is a bench inside of the pool too, so you can sit and enjoy the water. And next, you have an office space, which is next to a portal to take you to the next area. As we go up these stairs, we will see five bows, all with different enchantments, ranging from shock damage to paralysis to a chance to turn undead, several neat effects. To the right, we have two chests, one of which is empty, and the other has some scaled armor in case you want to take it. In the chests under the enchanted bows, we have nearly 1,400 custom arrows ranging between 22 and 24 base damage, named after the wind and water. There's a jewelry box, a dagger display, and tucked in the back corner we have two mannequins, and then we have three display cases. So this area is kind of like your armory. Now that we've seen all that this space has to offer, let's take the portal to my favorite area of the home. Now we're in the last section of the home on top of the tree, which not only includes the house, but has several walkout features on the deck, which you're going to absolutely love. Let's explore the house first. We'll start to our right, where we have a room with empty shelving, which would be perfect for Jackson's position or users to decorate, and a table and two chairs to enjoy the window views. There's a side door that leads to a wraparound deck, if you look between the tree and the limbs, you can actually see Windhelm. To show you how epically large this tree is, here we are on the bridge to Iverstead. And if we turn from here, you can see the tree. How awesome is that? Just to reiterate that point, we're on the Windhelm Bridge. And as we turn and look to the distance, there's the Dragon Tree Temple again. I thought I could casually slip this into my last review on Providence without anyone asking about it, but of course you guys were too sharp to miss it. 
Okay, next we have a bedroom with a bench, a door to the outdoor decking, a double bed, great window views of the mountain, a chest of drawers with some elven armor and mythic dawn robes, and a jewelry box. Let's head to the next space, and as we do, check out the view outside of our window. I can't wait to show you those features. They are really cool. Next, we're heading to a crafting room. Don't mind me as I take a turn to the left. I'm trying to do it slowly so I don't give anyone motion sickness. Jackson's Positioner users will like these empty shelves. You have some loose soul gems and that chest contains some soul gem freebies and a little bit of spare gold. There are some scrolls you can take. There's your alchemy lab. Several potions that you can pick up, they're dynamic. Several ingredients, that chest includes several alchemical ingredients as well. There's your arcane enchanter. There's a door to the decking. That chest has several alchemical ingredients. And then you have a little office space. Now that we've seen what the upstairs has to offer, let's head downstairs and see what that has. Although you just saw some light flicker, that hasn't happened too often. That just happened when I recorded it just now. The quirkiest thing I've seen is a few beams missing when you get near them, but it actually makes the view easier outside of the windows. Okay, there's a door to the outside decking. Here's a dining table for four. It's making me hungry just looking at it. And as we get to this next section, you have some more loose food that you can pick up, as well as some harvestable ingredients. There's another cooking pot. And now we're just going to check out one more bedroom before we head outside. And as we enter the bedroom, you can see a door to the decking, a chest of drawers with some more Forsworn armor, there's a jewelry box, a double bed, a bench, a wardrobe. And on this side of the room, you do have a knapsack and a satchel with some goodies in there, but nothing too game breaking. Okay, let's head outside and start to see these really unique features. The outside features in the home are built on this large deck on top of the tree. You've got a pond with a cool statue. Look at those water plants. You've got some great views of these huge tree limbs. You have a bench. You can see straight into your home because of the windows and it being the same cell. There's some dragon's tongue, a nice picnic table. Look at the butterflies flying around and how the limbs cast shadows on the deck. This is a beautiful space. Speaking of beautiful, look at the colors of those leaves. Look at all of those shades of red and orange and yellow. This is an autumn lover's dream. So if you typically like homes in the rift, you're gonna love this one. And look, even your tree has trees growing in it and grass. This is one large tree. As we head up these stairs, we approach the smithing area. On the far side of the deck, the mod author has given you some practice dummies to train with. And you can see the smithing building to the right, but before we go inside, I wanted to show you off the corner of this deck that you have an awesome view of Riften and Lake Honrich. Here's a bench for you or your followers to sit on on a nice day. And then here's the smithing building itself. Starting to the right, you have a workbench. There's a chest with several ingots and leather included. There's your anvil and your forge, some windows to enjoy a nice view while you're working. There's your smelter, your grindstone, and your tanning rack, and a bench for your followers to sit inside in case it's raining outside. And as we head out, you can see that you have an archery target to practice with as well. And hello leaves. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon Skyrim time, so the sun's right overhead, and it's just making a beautiful display of these leaves. And as we turn left, you can see the butterflies flying around again, and check out this awesome tree. And look at the texture of its bark. That is super colorful and pretty. And over here, you have another pool area. And you do have a bench inside of there in case you want to sit and relax. You can turn and look at that tree. You could even look down and check out the river. There are views aplenty. 
There's another bench to the right. There's a doorway to your kitchen on the bottom floor of your home. And now that we've come up these stairs, we're back to where we've started. Now that we've seen all of the features of this home, it's time for final thoughts. Dragon Tree Temple is a naturist's home built into the largest tree in Skyrim. The views from this home are epic, and you'd be hard pressed to find more beautiful views anywhere else in the game. The home offers a number of pools and springs for the player to sit back, relax, and soak all of the troubles of the day away. After all, a home is a place to relax. And as beautiful as this home is, it's also practical, offering a full smithing suite, a couple of cooking pots for your cooking needs, an alchemy lab for your potions and poisons, an arcane enchanter to help you make powerful weapons and armor, a stable for your horses to rest, custom bows, arrows, and daggers for your character to try, and beds for your followers to rest. But although it has a lot of beds, don't sleep on this home or you'll regret it. This concludes our feature of Dragon Tree Temple. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and leave a comment with your thoughts. To see more of my past tours, click the playlist on the top left. To see my future content, click the channel icon on the bottom left to subscribe. And to never miss an episode, click the bell icon to receive notifications of when I post. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next episode.